Hello everyone, welcome to Everything Arsenal and this is the latest Arsenal news, stroke transfer news. Not the piece of news we wanted to wake up to, but unfortunately we know it's Arsenal and you know such things usually happen to us. It's actually very true, these things only happen to us. Like how the hell can we be having such a great season and within four games... All, both our midfielders are out injured. Like, that can only happen at Arsenal. Everything is going well. We are top of the table. Just need some consistency going. We are ready for the fifth game. We are ready for the sixth game. Bam! Injury strikes again. So, we will be talking about what um, David Onstein had to say today about um, El Nene, who's out injured. I'm hearing that he actually played the Fulham game with an injury the entire second half. So, that is actually... Very, very um, fair play to him. Uh, he actually played that game with an injury. I, I actually think he didn't know about it, so he only came to realize later. He obviously joins Thomas Pate, who won't be out for too long, but we know with Thomas Pate, we cannot really depend on him coming back. If, even if he comes back, he might come and play two games, and then he's out injured again. So we'll be talking about that as well. And obviously, Tillemans, will he be enough? Will he be covering our midfield, or are there any other midfielders we should be getting? If you're watching this on Facebook, let me know how many midfielders do you think we need now? Because at the start of the transfer window, I say that we needed two midfielders. That was before we knew about El Nene getting injured and all the other things that have happened. So if we needed two midfielders, does that mean we now need three midfielders since El Nene is out injured? So let's go through the pieces of news. I mean, it's so Arsenal, man. These injuries, man. Kazola, Rosicki, Eduardo, and we can go on and on and on and on. Injuries affecting us. So I would hate us to go into the rest of the season like the, like the way we did from January. You know, the reason we didn't get top four last season is because of the injuries and because we didn't have backup. The reason why we didn't even win that Carabao Cup last season is because we didn't have any depth in the squad. I'd hate that to happen again this season. So here's what they had to say about El Nini, David Onstein. Uh, Mohamed El Nini suffered significant injury against Fulham. Arsenal are waiting full extent, but 30-year-old expected to miss considerable spells. So it's not like one week or two weeks. It could be three, four four months I'm out for El Nene. Uh, Party also nursing relatively minor muscle issues, so Arsenal may look to recruit in midfield. So David Johnson says now that El Nene is injured and Party is injured as well, Arsenal will probably definitely be going for a midfielder in the transfer market. So that is very unfortunate, El Nene getting injured. We did not expect that to happen. Um, this is the one guy that, um, since he doesn't play that much, we thought he was always going to be there. But the one game, like this was the first game El Nene played for us. Like, are we cast or something? This was the first time El Nene has played this season. He didn't even finish, like, the first 45 minutes, he was already injured. Like, what the hell is going on with Arsenal? But um, Pate is also out, but he will be back very soon. But as I've said in the intro, how long will he be back for? We know Thomas Pate could be back for one game, and then he's out for four weeks. And the moment you don't have El Nini and Pate, you are in a lot of trouble. So we'll be taking a look at the different options we could have um later on. But let's keep on reading all the articles on El Nini. Um, again, Transfer Daily confirms that Arsenal transfer deadline day life, sorry, confirms that Arsenal could be forced to sign a new midfielder after significant injury to Mohamed El Nini against Fulham. So both our midfielders are out. That is Arsenal for you. Both our midfielders are out. El Nini actually got injured against um, Fulham over the weekend. We did not expect to hear that news today. We were talking about transfers, but then this will definitely affect the transfer news um, again. So we will be going through the different options you can do. First, um, let's see, let's 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 use this first. Um, this is the kind of um, formation you've been using this season: a four-three-three with um, Pate or El Nene in midfield and Jack in front of them. So, let's ignore the other positions. We know Odegaard plays on that right side, Saka on that um, far right um, wing, and then Martinelli and Jesus. All that. So that is the midfield you've been playing. Now that Pate and El Nene are both out, what can Atta do? Remember, we actually have a game tomorrow. And I don't think we'll get a player before tomorrow. So we actually have to deal with the Aston Villa game without both of those midfielders. So what can he do for tomorrow? The first option is obviously playing Granite Jack in midfield. And right away, I can tell you 100%, I do not like this option. One, when you play Xhaka in that um, number six role by himself in midfield, that is the position he was playing for us under Wenger and Emre in a few in a few months under Atta as well, or a few years under Atta as well. The moment you play Xhaka in that midfield, 
he's going to pick up yellow cards. He's going to pick up red cards because he's very slow in that midfield. And whenever a, a number 10 is quick and he can turn him in, in and out, inside out, he's going to pick up a lot of yellow cards and red cards and he's very slow in that midfield. Number two, Granite Jack has been playing very, very well this season in an advanced role. So just because we've picked up a couple of injuries in midfield, we cannot ruin the rest of our team. So Jacques has been playing so well going forward. I cannot want us to take that away already and bring him back in midfield. That would just be crazy. So that is the first option, playing Granite Jacques in midfield. But for me, I don't like this. By the way, let me know which option you would prefer. For me, Granite Jacques in midfield, definitely not. I'm not a fan of that at all. The second option is to play um, Lokonga in midfield and then obviously keep Jacques and Odegaard in the rest of the midfield positions. Again, right away, I'm not a fan of this as well. Uh, you, you, you know why we're heading with this one, right? I'm definitely talking about some signing players. I do not like this option as well. Lokonga in midfield, we saw him playing there for us in January and February when party was over at African Cup of Nations and um, El Nini as well. And Lokonga, was, he played well for maybe a game. But the rest of it, the reason why we went out of the Carabao Cup is because Lokonga was in that midfield against Liverpool. He could not deal with that Liverpool midfield by himself in that structure. Lokonga cannot play for you as the lone midfielder. It is a bit of a struggle until he gains the experience. That is the engine of the team. So basically, if you play Lokonga there, you're talking about Lokonga being the engine of your car. That is not possible. Not at his age, not with um, the lack of experience. Not at all. So I would not like Lokonga to play in that role. As, as I said, the reason why he didn't win the Carabao Cup is because Lokonga was playing there. The reason why he went out of the FA Cup so early is because we didn't have any other option apart from Lokonga in that midfield. So whenever Pat and El Nene are not there, I'm not a fan of Lokonga there. And anyway... In um in the preseason, when Lokongo was playing on the left side, um, that Xhaka role, he actually scored a couple of goals in preseason. I think he scored against Chelsea. I think he also scored against Ipswich. And I think he assisted like three times. So he had like two goals and three assists in preseason Lokonga. And that is when he was pushing forward. He cannot do it from the midfield role. So just like Xhaka, both of them have been playing well going forward. So there's no need of dropping them back in again. So for me, Lokonga in midfield, I'm not a fan of that as well. The third option is playing Ben White in midfield. Now, I I'm happy with this one. I, I actually would not mind seeing this one. Yes, I would not mind seeing this one. Ben White is very good in terms of passing. Uh, he's very versatile as well. He can play as a central defender. He can play as the right, right back. We've seen him play there the entire season, um, this campaign. We've never really seen him playing in midfield. And that is a position that I'd love to see him being tried uh, tried in. Just like David Lewis when he was at Arsenal, I always wanted to see him in midfield. And I think Ben White can actually play there very, very well because of his passing ability and basically becomes like a, a third centre-back when uh, when we lose the ball. He can just um, drop in and join um, Gabriel and Saliba. And if you have Tomias on the right side or Zinchenko on the left side, Tini, whoever, we can make it a back five whenever we don't have the ball. So I would be happy to see Ben White in midfield. That is because... On the right side, we already have players like um, Cedric is actually fit right now. I know many of you did not like Cedric, but when it comes to injuries, you kind of have to play all these players. So Cedric on the right side would be okay. I'd not mind that. But also remember, we still have Tommy Asso, So we still have two right backs in the team. So we can actually afford to move um, Ben White in midfield because we already have two players who can cover that right side as well. I, I, I'd not mind seeing uh, Ben White in midfield at all. I'd not mind that at all. Um, the fourth option is Zinchenko in midfield. Now, just like um, just like the likes of Lokonga, that is not Zinchenko's favorite position. Zinchenko has been playing so well for us at left back, and his midfield position is further forward, not in the num in the defensive role. He can play there if this if Pat is there, then Zinchenko can play in front of him, but not Zinchenko playing as the the actual defensive midfielder. Yes, Zinchenko can play a lot of positions, but right there. I'm not a fan of that at all. So I would prefer Zinchenko playing further forward. So that leaves us with only one option, signing players. I mean, yes, you can play Ben White in midfield. 
but the rest of the options are not a fan of all the rest of the three options are not a fan of so we kind of have to buy midfielders um one of them is Yuri Tillemans but then again Yuri Tillemans is not a defensive midfielder he plays in that Jaka role as well but just adding that um extra body in your midfield can definitely help you out then you might even have to change your structure if the injuries become too much you might have to change for, from a 4-3-3 to a 4-2-3-1 um but before even I go into Tillemans this is the other option I had if you're, if you're playing Nokonga in midfield, you have to switch that formation to a 4-2-3-1. But the problem is you cannot have a couple of injuries ruining your entire structure of the team. So one player gets injured and you have to change the formation, there's a problem in your team. You have to have players who can just directly replace that player. So if those two injuries make us change the formation, then we're in a lot of trouble. But the only... Uh, place I can allow, the only time I can allow Lokonga to play in midfield is if we play with Jacka next to him or someone like a Tillemans next to him. That's the only time I can allow that. But I'm not a fan of changing back to a 4-2-3-1. The 4-3-3 is already working. We are top of the table from playing that formation. We do not want to change the structure of the side. So will that make Arsenal go big for Tillemans? Does that mean now we'll have to splash all the money for Tillemans, especially if um, he's trying to um, move Xhaka into defensive midfield role? Will that mean that T um, Tillemans joins Arsenal? Obviously, yesterday we talked about um, the latest on Tillemans. This was the latest on him. Dean James uh, Fabrizio Romano uh, reported that Leicester are still asking for 35 to 40 million pounds for him. Arsenal have no intention to pay such an amount for a player who has a year left in his contract. So that was yesterday. That was before we knew about El Neni's injury. I'm kind of assuming maybe at Tenedu already knew about the injury. Obviously, they knew about it maybe yesterday or something before us. So I don't know if this news came um, before um, the injuries was confirmed to them. So if it did, then that definitely changes the plans. They might have to pay that money because of the injuries. I know Tillemans is not a defensive midfielder, but just to add another midfield into that uh, into that um, area because we, we are going to have a lot of problems. Right now, the Europa League starts next week. We are going to be playing Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, every single week. There's no gap at all. And there's like an international break in the next one month. Players will get injured again. Players will pick up suspensions. What happens if Xhaka gets another red card and is out for three games? We are down to Lokonga as the only midfielder. Now, I do understand Fabio Vieira is in the team, Smith Rowe is in the team, and they can all play in that Xhaka role if Xhaka has to move um, in central midfield. But then again, as I said, you cannot move everything around because of one injury. Because of one injury, okay, Zinchenko moves to midfield. Okay, Tommy Asu to center back. Okay, Jesus to the right. No, you cannot mess up with the whole structure of the team if uh, because of one injury that um, puts you in a very, very tough position. So Tillemans is the first option. The other option is getting another loan, another player on loan. So that is what I've always said since um, one month ago, not because I knew there were injuries. I just said I think Arsenal will probably get one signing in and another player on loan because that forces us to get one player on loan. I've, I've seen someone mentioning in the comment section, Arthur Melo from Juventus, because we've been linked to you for such a long time. Could we end up going for a player like that on loan for maybe six months, one year to just cover us in midfield? Because with the Elnanian party out, we definitely need midfielders. I am really hoping that Ateta and Edu do not go into the rest of the season without signing any midfielders. That will be suicide. You cannot do that again. Like last season, you know that January transfer window? I actually, I actually woke up and I was like, I, I actually dreamt about that January transfer window. It's still a nightmare that goes through my head. Like that final day, waiting for Arsenal to sign a player, and we didn't sign a player on that final day of January. It still hurts until today. I do not want us to go through that again. Not at all. Not after starting the season on such a positive note. Everything is feeling good. The fans are feeling good about Arsenal. Even the game tomorrow. People are predicting Arsenal 5, Aston Villa nil. When was the last time you saw people that confident in Arsenal? Like, it's it's been a long time. So I don't want us to mess that up because of not signing a midfielder so let me know how many midfielders do you think we need um is it one do you think we need two more midfielders do you think we need three more midfielders and apart from Tillemans, is there any other option you're thinking of okay I'll obviously um, i'm not expecting you to start talking about players like milinkovic savage 70 million 80 million i mean that's a bit um too much but you might have to start splashing cash now i mean if you have injuries you have to kind of splash the cash you cannot wait at all so let me see what you guys are saying about this um unfortunate news that we have we've had to work uh, wake up to today um let's see um job says two midfielders are needed um 
Shomana says, I've long talked about buying midfield. The season is long. I've all, I actually agree with that. I've always said we need midfielders instead of wingers. When I heard about Rafinha, Noah Lang, Arsenal want Pedro Neto, Asensio, I'm like, fine, but you need midfielders first. I would actually have gone for two midfielders before. If you ask me right now, even yesterday before the injury, I'd still go for two midfielders instead of Pedro Neto. That is just my honest opinion. I, I believe the midfield has definitely hurt us a lot. And I, I think I don't think Saka is Arsenal's biggest problem. I don't think um, Smith Rowe is Arsenal's biggest problem. It's nearly not, not at all. Like those guys can actually deliver for us. But in midfield, we know when Patty gets an injury, we are messed up. And now that El Neni, the backup, is also injured, we are definitely screwed big time. Um, J Julia says we need just one. Get Tillemans and let them recover first. So Julius is hoping. Julius is saying get one and then pray. Get one midfield and then pray that all the other players get uh, recover as quickly as possible. But then again, Julius, do you really trust in um, Pepe, uh, in Pepe, in Patti's injury record? Like we know he's going to come back and play the Man United game and then after that he's out for another one month. What happens after that? The games get tougher. Next week we have FC Zurich away from home and then we'll start facing the likes of um, Tottenham, Liverpool, Man City in October. Like that will be a very, very hard time and the transfer window will be closed. We can't do anything about it. Actually, before I come to the rest of your comments, there is another option I've just remembered right now as, I'm, as I've, been, I've been talking. What about Maitland Niles? Could we actually change our plans on Maitland Niles? Maybe Maitland Niles was supposed to be sold. He was supposed to be sold or loaned out. Can maybe at the end they do will be like, you know what? Now, since we have injuries, let's keep Maitland Niles. Would you guys be happy with that idea? Could you see Arsenal ending up keeping Maitland Niles? That could also be an option for us. Again, I'm not a fan of that option. I'm not um, his biggest fan at all. But that could be something that happens as well, especially since we have a lot of competitions. Um, Johnson says two midfielders, right winger, please assert. So three players. Johnson needs three players in this final three days. That's very hard. If we pull off three players right now, that would be a huge surprise to me. I'd be very happy, but that would be um, very um, surprising news. Um, sad news says Divine. Cookie says deadline ain't to tomorrow. Thursday, actually, Cookie Thursday. Uh, we aren't getting Tillemans as things stand. I could see us getting nobody by the end of the deadline. Hopefully, I do and it's working behind the scenes magic. It, it, it would be suicide if we don't get any players. I believe it would still have been suicide even before the El Nini um, injury. Now that El Nini is injured, now we desperately need signings. Hopefully, it's not um it's not panic buying. Hopefully, they already had plans and um they're going to end up signing those players that planned for not just anyone. Don't go and start buying Matic or Fred for Man United. Now, not talking about those kind of panic buyings. Uh, we need one more. Says Samuel. Uh, Godi says I'm just two midfielders. Um, Tactical says if Tillemans is a predicted lineup for United Leicester deal is off. If he isn't in the squad, it's on. Yeah, if he is in the in the lineup for Leicester on Thursday, then we're probably not going to get him. But it's interesting now with the injury, are we going to end up paying that money? Um, Kendrick says we need two midfielders right now. Uh, no joke, we must sign two uh, because if we didn't do, we will not secure a top four this season. If we start losing games, the frustration will be much devastating. Yeah, that's the thing. When you win games, things are, ex are very exciting. But when you start losing games how do you pick yourself up from that especially now with injuries you have we have to see how we deal with that i mean we're not going to win all 38 games we know there's a time that will come that we we'll lose games obviously so it's going to be interesting to see how uh we um pick ourselves up from that we need to get business done asap um says cookie i don't think we'll get any player before um tomorrow so against Aston Villa, what is he going to do? Are we going to play Lokonga in midfield? Or will Zinchenko play there? Or will Ben White play there? Or will um, Patti make a miraculous recovery and play there tomorrow? That could be an option. But even if Patti is fit, I would not play him tomorrow. I feel like we can still beat Aston Villa without Patti. But against Man United, I really need Patti there. Now that they've signed Casemiro, I need a bit of energy there in that midfield. Um so sad for sure, says Herbert. Um, I'm not happy at all. Arsenal have big match with Man United this coming Sunday, says Kazala. Man United is far. Let's talk about Aston Villa first. But yeah, I've just said party. I would rest party for that match. But yeah, that is a big game. That is a game we do not want to lose. Not to Man United. Anyone but Man United. Um, Chisonga says, um, too bad. Uh, party injured. Elneny injured. Arsenal better be uh, needful first. We need wingers, please. Um, I don't think we need wingers first. I think we need midfielders first. If we can get wingers through the door as well, fine. But midfielders very, very quickly, man. Like In terms of wingers, like, especially on the left side, 
you can play Martinelli there. You can play um, you can play Smith Rowe there. You can play Fabio Vieira there if you want. On the right side, you can play Saka there. You can play Marquinhos there. Fabio Vieira played there in the under-21. Jesus can play on that right side. Like you see, there's a lot of options you can use. But in midfield, when Pat and Eleni are not there, you're going to be in a lot of trouble because I'm not a fan of Xhaka playing in that role. So I, we desperately need midfielders. Um, some people are suggesting we integrate Sambi in the squad with this. I just don't trust it. He's need, he needs long time. Definitely not in a 4-3-3. If we are changing formation, if we are having to change formation, fine. But Lokonga in a 4-3-3, I'm not a fan of that at all. Um, Lokonga for now says, Vea, he'll probably play tomorrow. So for tomorrow, we will support him. But for the rest of the season, we need someone else there. I um, think we will regret loaning Patino now. He should be our um, cup midfielder now. Lokonga has to play there in the cups. I mean, he's injured anyway. Patino is out injured. So I guess, I don't know. Maybe if he's at Arsenal, he wouldn't have gotten injured. However, you want to look at it, Cookie. But um, we still needed midfielders, even with those guys. I still believe we needed uh, midfielders. Uh, Benson says so bad. Um, Via says for tomorrow, Lokonga or Ben White. That um, I think Lokonga will probably play tomorrow. Uh, I would love to see Ben White as a midfielder, but I think they will go with Lokonga. Um, ben White should play in midfield, says Gabriel. Uh, we just need a midfielder to be back up for Thomas Pate. Um, um, as for tomorrow, uh, I mean, we need a midfielder to be a backup for Party. I mean, Party is not even there. So, I mean, can you really start getting? Uh, I mean, Party cannot really depend on Party being there. So, if you're talking about getting backup for Party, you need like two of them because Party's backup is now injured. Are, are we supposed to be now looking at replacements for Party, not backup? Because the injuries are really scaring me. If he gets injured again, I'd really be start considering getting other midfielders um, and having Patty as the backup. Like that, Patty is, is world class. Like literally on his day, he's going to help you win the game by himself. But the injuries, man, like it's going to affect you. The reason we've not gotten top four is because he was one of those players who was out injured. So I don't want that to affect us again. I want Zinchenko in midfield and Tierney um, left back. Um, that is an option as well. But I felt I even predicted Tomias to play at left back um, tomorrow. But that was before the injury because Tierney, he was subbed very early. Did not play very well against Fulham and he was subbed very early. Maybe his injury is not um, is not um, very uh, recovered yet from the injury that he had picked up. So we have to t look at that as well. So I don't know if Tierney will play tomorrow. I don't think Zinchenko will play in midfield though, unless he's going to play further forward later on in the season. Um, we must buy serious because the midfield, we want some um, Lucas assigned for West Ham. Yep, Lucas Paquette is gone. Um, very sad, says Vincent. Please, um, stop bargaining who plays the role. Aso should get us Tillemans first, says Julius. Um, I prefer Ben White and Xhaka, uh, says Abiodan. Um, problem with that is TN is so injury prone as well. Who will place him at left back? That's the thing. If he moves Zinchenko in midfield and then TN gets injured again at left back, you're going to have to switch things around again. And you do not want to do that. You do, it's going to be confusing to the players. It's going to be confusing to the manager, confusing to the fans, and very beneficial to the opponent. When you're confusing yourselves, it's going to benefit the opponents. When you're having to play left back at right back, right back in midfield, midfield in right, it's too much, man. Uh, ben White is better for now, says so uh, top. Um, for tomorrow, Lokonga says, Andrew Cookie says, yeah, good uh, point. We usually use Xhaka there, but uh, then Smith throw comes in at central attacking midfield and we have no bench. That's the thing. Uh, when the injury starts affecting you, when the players start coming from the bench, then you don't have a bench to bring on in the second half right, right away. I think Arsenal management had a problem in signing. Um, the reason why we missed Champions League last night is the same as today. We don't have a party replacement, says um, Katuma. Who do you guys think we should buy to replace party? If you're given that option, who's the one midfielder you want to replace um, party? We usually used to talk about Bisuma, but Bisuma is now gone. Like, is there any... Uh, the one player that I've really liked... I uh, really like is McGinn from Aston Villa because he, because he can play in the party role and in the Xhaka role and he's, he's used to the Premier League. Uh, White or Xhaka, um, we need to sign at least three experienced midfielders. Says Herbert, mm, I think that will definitely not happen. Um, we have to sign Tillemans. I mean, if we are ambitious, Herbert, we might get that. If we are ambitious and we want to, we don't want to take this um, season to waste basically we can't sign all those guys uh hopefully two midfielders and also a right winger please and we are set um if that happens maybe you're going to sign two players and get one on loan uh we need at least two says john at least two says con i need more midfielders says fonda how long does it look like eleni will be out and then it could the way it's looking like he'll be out for months so i'd not be maybe even after the world cup that's when he can return 
for party party it could be party is a, a short time he can he can even play tomorrow he might end up playing tomorrow but the problem is if he plays tomorrow will he be there for my net because he can easily get injured again that's the problem um but garang says please let them sign uh ruben neves from Wolves to be a defensive midfielder um they already confirmed ruben neves will not be leaving their coach talked about it yesterday and uh, i i I'm, I'm surprised that he's still there i'm surprised that he didn't move away from there to an arsenal or man united or chelsea and it's very quality but right now if you go for a neves especially that they know you have injuries they will tell you 90 million and they will not be kidding uh benson says we need at least two midfielders um who will replace uh, and then another player will replace pepe um i think we will replace pepe eventually this season i think we will get in a winger depending on who though it could it be Pedro Neto? It might not be him. Could we upgrade um, Marquinhos? Could we start playing Marquinhos in the first team um, throughout now and upgrade him from the under-21s? All those could happen. Arsenal need to sign the midfielders and a winger to continue our winning streak. Uh, we need very good midfielders, says Vivens. We need two midfielders, says um, Ezekiel. We need two midfielders, says Lucas. So everyone is saying two midfielders, two midfielders. Seth is saying two serious midfielders, not just two uh, midfielders. Um, Tonali is good and uh, Modric says um, Daniel so Daniel wants Tonali and uh, Mudrik. Um, Sami says um, replacement on injured. Oh, sorry, I want Neto. Says uh, Miracle. Uh, we need Zaha and Tillman's Premier will be ours. Says um, Lambs. There's no way Crystal Palace will sell Zaha. If Zaha ends up ch ch joining Chelsea, I'd be very surprised. Like they will ask for 100 million. I'm not sure there's anything that is going to pay that money. I mean, I think we already wasted our chance on getting Zaha. We were supposed to get Zaha instead of Pepe three years ago when Emery wanted Zaha. We messed that up. We got Pepe and the Pepe one did not work at all. So right now, getting Zaha, I don't think we're going to get him. And um, I love Zaha as a player. He's going to absolutely put the, the right back and the left back in a lot of trouble. But the one thing I don't like about Zaha is the constant crying and crying and crying, fouling, get, rolling down on the floor, complaining to the referee, getting yellow cards. That is the one thing I don't like about Zaha. I do not like... A, we already have Jaka with that, getting yellow cards, but he has, he has improved recently in terms of discipline. But Zaha's discipline is... I, I think it's a bit too much for me. Like the, the constant yellow cards he gets, like is, is terrible. If you have him in your FPL team, he gets so many yellow cards because of complaining. He always complains a lot. So if if he ends up joining us, that is something that Atsa would have to work on. And we all know he was not happy to work with them, Gwenduzi on that one. So Zaha is just basically a, a grown up Gwenduzi in terms of that. So do, are we really ready to deal with that again? Please let us um, get Tillemans and um, Cody Gagpo says Abobo. What kind of training do Arsenal have that they always get injured? I always need someone to answer me that question, um, Jeremiah. Like, it's not just like one week or two weeks recently. Like, it's been there since like 2006. Like, how? How many times do we get injuries? Okay, the ones for Eduardo and Ramsey and um, Diaby, the ones for breaking your leg those ones you cannot control any that one can happen to anyone but the muscle injuries like wilshire and then obviously you get rosicki getting injured again and then diaby picks up another injury again and then van Passi is out injured again and then alexis sanchez is out injured and then two months later someone else is out injured like how many times do we get these injuries it's it's always muscle injuries as well Tierney, Party, like since they joined Arsenal, like I don't think Tierney was ever injured at Celtic. I don't think Party only got any injuries at Atletico Madrid. At Arsenal, Party has been injured for more than like 10 to 15 times already. Tierney, he cannot play three games in a row without getting injured. Like that is just crazy to me. That is, that's a very good question, Jeremiah. And we cannot really say it's the training methods because it's been four different managers, potentially four or five different medical um medical guys in the team so that is usually very crazy to me like the way we pick up those injuries and I, if you look at every single injury since 2006 i think arsenal are number one in the entire of the entirety of the premier league um let us go for netto also netto would cost you 50 million so i don't think we can we, we will go for two midfielders uh, good midfielders and then still get netto so i think i guess it's a, it's a it's a case of sacrificing either we go for two very good midfielders and a young winger or we go for one very good midfield and a one very good winger. We cannot get two very good midfield and still get um, Neto. Um, obviously, we can. I wish we can. 
but I don't think they'll splash that cash. Um, Joe says we need two midfielders. Um, we can't win a game. Uh, who, who is that idiot you're talking about, Sami? Uh, I'm not sure Sami is talking about. Um, Zinchenko can play there as a two recovery, but actually need left winger. Uh, Pat is out of the match on Sunday. I don't know. He, he might make that match. He might even play tomorrow. One left-footed defender, one winger, and one midfielder. One left-footed centre-back or left or left back which one are you talking about um what about fabio says fondo fabio can play fabio will probably play against aston villa as a, as a, sub, a substitute but fabio Vera is not a thomas party replacement so for him the only time we can use fabio Vera is if we are going to push Jacques into midfield and then the, the position where Jacques departs we can put um fabio Vera there or smith throw but fabio Vera is kind of a backup for odegaard so again if you start using fabio Vera elsewhere when will he rest Odegaard? Does that mean Odegaard has to play every single game? You can you can play Smith Rowe and um, Fabi Vera, but remember we do have um, Europa League games coming up. If we start using all these players in the Premier League, um, ninety minutes, ninety minutes, then we are going to have a bit of a of a problem in the Europa League as well. We need a strong midfielder. Says Young, of um, Tillemans would be a good deputy though i would love tillemans i mean even if you have him playing the party role for one two games i wouldn't mind that we need two midfielder says andrew um edmund says if christopher and kunku is available let's get him you're never going to get him kunku you're going to have like to pay like 200 million for kunku not not a chance there's he's, he's not going to leave um his team at all i would love especially a champions league team he's not going to move away right now with two days remaining arsenal honestly needs a forward a central midfielder and a winger Ibrahim says we need a forward um i don't think we are going to get a forward um we need a winger says um lucas uh, we need to get business done today and tomorrow, says Jumoke. Um, Edmund says Kante, Kante, Kante is more injured than Thomas Partey. So if you're signing Kante, you're, you're, you're actually lying to yourself, um, Edmund. Kante picks up more injuries than Thomas Partey. And that is saying something like recently, Kante is a very good player, but he actually gets more uh, injured more times than Partey. He has way too many injuries. So you cannot really have Kante as a replacement for Partey. You might as well have Partey as a replacement for Kante because Kante is the one who gets injured more. Uh, we need to get midfielder, says Manoba. And, and Chelsea will never sign. Uh, give you a player. And if Chelsea give you a player, you have to ask yourself questions. Remember William? Remember William Gallas? Remember Peter Cech? If they give you a player, you have to ask yourself so many questions. Emmanuel says, I'm um, signed Tillemans with immediate effect, and then Arthur Mellon known will be a good deal. That could happen, um, Emmanuel. We need a midfielder, um, says Paolo. Pedro Neto is better than um, all and will help us a lot, says um, Joel. He'll definitely bring in quality, but I, I'm just saying I think we need midfielders first before wingers. Um, Abobo says we should go for midfielders, please, because if we win against United, we're winning our next matches like Everton and other matches. Um, Abobo is looking at 10 wins in a row. Our back is good and our front um, is good as well, but midfield is totally bad. Actually, I, I I agree with that. I think our midfield, and we've we've taken so long to sort out our midfield, man. Like until today, we still not never gotten a replacement for Vieira and Gilberto Silva. Like almost twenty years later, we need someone there. We tried Jaka, it didn't work. We tried Torreira, it didn't work. We tried so many other players, it didn't work. Like until today, we're still looking for someone who can play there for five, ten seasons for us. And um, they should get Arthur Mellon, Tilleman, says Vera. Um, I'm worried about our midfield. We need um, Casino at Brighton, I think you're talking about. Um, what's his name? I know who you're talking about, Caicedo. Yeah, that is the only replacement for party. Um, it would be a good option. It's gone silent on Caicedo recently. Uh, we need to also bring Zaha, says I mean, Iniesta. Um, Zaha will not be leaving Crystal Park, he'll not to join Arsenal. That's one. I'm I can say 100% Zaha will not be joining Arsenal. That that would be a shock if Zaha moves to Arsenal right now. Uh, even if he leaves Crystal Palace right now, it's going to be a shock. I think he's even injured right now. He didn't even play the last game against Man City. Watching live from North Ghana, appreciated Salifu. Mikel Atta needs to strengthen the midfield because party absence has to show how um how to show how incapable last old midfield can contest with strong opposition midfield says Friday. It is definitely a concern when you start facing the likes of Liverpool in that midfield. I like that option, Edward. Douglas Luiz. He actually scored from a corner the other day. I, I do love Douglas Luiz um and my gain from Aston Villa. We were linked to him like a 
in January or something, but we never got him. That would be a good signing. I mean, Aston Villa not doing so well, so maybe a couple of players would want to leave. Uh, watching from then, he's, he's also a Brazilian, so we know Arsenal with Brazilians. Get as many Brazilians as you want. Um, watching from Zambia, appreciate it. Um, Christian, um, Konku is great. Uh, Mikel Atisa needs to sign a midfielder, says Paolo. Arsenal's injuries. Yep, Vincent, Arsenal's injuries. Um, Mahari says, I think for the case of tomorrow's game against Aston Villa, I should use Ben White, but getting new midfielders, guys, we really need to be keen on signings to avoid such incidents. We need players like N'Golo Conte. No, we don't need players like N'Golo Conte. N'Golo Conte has so many injuries. I don't know why people love N'Golo Conte. N'Golo Conte five years ago, yes. N'Golo Conte four years ago, yes. N'Golo Conte right now, N'Golo Conte does not even play two games for Chelsea before he gets injured. He gets so many injuries and different injuries as well. So, Right now, I feel like um, Kante used to be the best midfield in the world. Right now, today, I, I don't think he's the best midfield in the world. I'm probably sure you can mention like three to five midfielders who are better than him right now. I think obviously his game has obviously dropped because of his age and obviously um, the injuries as well. Um, we have to sign Declan, Declan Rice, says Madi. Declan Rice, you'll have to pay something like 200 million. English players, you'll have to pay 200 million. Um, Zaha is not a team player, says Ebenezer. I'm actually going to agree with that. So I, I, I don't feel like um, I feel like you do more harm than good. That's how I feel about Zaha. Like our team right now, we are building a team that is together in team spirit, in getting along. Everyone, like all the fans right now, the fans, everyone of you loves Martinelli. We all love Saka. We all love Odegaard. We all love Saliba. We all love Gabriel. Uh, we all love Ramsdale. We all love Gabriel Jesus. Like, this is the first time that all of us love a lot of players. Usually, some fans don't like Luis. Some fans like Tierney. Some don't like Luis. Some people like um, Socrates. Some don't like Mustafi or all that. Don't like Mustafi. Some people love um, El Nini. Some people don't like Xhaka. Like, we usually have at least 50% of um, even Pepe. Like a lot of people like him, but a lot of people don't like Pepe. So right now is the first time that we have fans loving every single player and players getting along with each other. And I think Zaha is the kind of player to kind of ruin that a lot. He will definitely um, ruin that. And I don't like his attitude in terms of picking up the yellow card. So, and anyway, 100 million, 200 million, you are never going to get um, Zaha. Um, Arsenal should just pay the 40 million Tillemans uh, is demanding. That is a player I'd love. Tillemans are definitely go for. So Alifu says Tillemans in Zaha. Um, Afro King says we always struggle when parties out of the team. We need a good midfield and a winger to help suck on the flank. You you need a great midfield. I actually think you need more than good. Midfield is your engine. Uh, I think it was a Pogba spell, says Akene. Um, guys in Aslo, we have the alternative for paper replacement like Fabian Marquinhos. You want the good holding midfielder for sure. I agree that. I think we need midfielders first before wingers. I don't think Saka is our biggest problem. I I, I don't know why we should be looking for a backup for Saka before looking for an actual midfielder first. You look for the ones who are going to start games for you before looking for backups. Uh, can we still sign at least two players and we won't be affected by FF, uh, FF, um, F FFP rules um, this transfer? Um, I think we can, yeah. I mean, Chelsea and Chelsea are about to spend 300 million. My United are about to spend more than, they've spent more than 200 million. Even Nottingham Forest have signed like 17 players. So, We've, we've not used, how much have we used? Um, Jesus, Zinchenko, that's like 80 million. Um, Marquinhos, we've not, we've not used too much money. Fabio, we've used like 100 and something um, million. That's not too much. Uh, it's not too much. I mean, if you give me 100 million, oh my goodness. Um, seriously, we need that Tillemans for, for the team. It's not too much. Um, for in terms of transfer, it's not too much. Uh, we need Tillemans and Marco Sensi on loan. Um, let's go for Asensio, he's affordable, forget about um, the Leicester guy. But they play in two different positions, um, Daniel. That, that is a winger and um, a central midfielder. So can you still sign Tillemans? Of course we can. Um, as as um, Tactical said earlier on in the chat, if he doesn't play, Man United have a game on Thursday against Leicester. If he's not in that team, then it, it could be because he's about to leave. Um, this is so frustrating, says Kamara. Arsenal always um, suffering with injuries every single season. This this time is even more incredible. Like literally just four games into the season, not even in the middle of the season, just four games into the season we are doing so well. Boom, three injuries. Zinchenko out. Party out, El Nini out. Like all at once, all in the space of two days. 
it's just, just crazy. I usually do feel like someone cast us, like the injuries, you have to, so someone cast us, either Ozzy left and cast us more or something happened because we cannot pick up three injuries in just two days. And then it's the, the injuries themselves, we've not actually watched the injuries happen. Like we just heard that Zinchenko got injured in training. We just heard that um, Party got injured. We never saw him getting injured. We never even saw Eleni getting injured. He actually played that game with an injury and you came to here like three days later that he got injured. Uh, we need Zaha, says Fremont. No, we don't need Zaha. We need a midfielder. I don't think Zaha. Do you, let me, I mean, unless I'm wrong, let me see what you guys are saying. Do you guys think like, do you guys feel like Zaha is the answer for us uh, to us all's problems? Um, also about Douglas Louise. I love Douglas Louise. I would definitely take him if the price is right. I would definitely take him. Arsenal should go for Tillemans. Um, Matthias says for Fana. For Fana is going to Chelsea. Um, can I just convert Ben White in, in the mid party position? Um, for a couple of games, definitely. I love his passing range, as you said. He's very, he's very um, mobile. He can play in different roles and versatile as well. So he can move around the pitch. I love that. And when you know, whenever he picks the ball in defense, he usually run, He can run past four or five players whenever he plays as a central defender. So if he plays as a central midfielder, that would be great. How are you, Joseph? How are you, RK? I uh, appreciate it. Um, keep Niles, then buy one defender, left-footed and winger. Then Ukrainian winger, that um, guy, William Cavalio. William Cavalio, my goodness. We are still talking about William Cavalio. Ismail says, Watford midfielder, Musa Sissoko. Oh, my goodness. He, he, I'm telling you, you rather play Ramsdale in that midfield. I am not signing Sissoko. I, you rather push Ramsdale into that midfield. Musa Sissoko. Now, I mean, it's I mean, Sissoko was um Sissoko was great at Newcastle. At Tottenham, he was a disaster. Like when he signed for Tottenham, he was a disaster. I, I'm not disrespect to Watford, but there's a reason why Sissoko is at Watford. There's a reason why he's playing the championship right now. He's he's way past his time, and I'm definitely not signing Sissoko, man. Absolutely not. Now, listen, there's one thing I love about Sissoko: the power, the power in midfield. He has the power, like he can run past four or five players. But that's it. He, he will not assist anyone from the midfield. He will not I add any goals for you. He will not um, help uh, Lokonga's game. He will not help Fabio Vera's game. Uh, like, I, I'm not a fan of that. Mus Musa Sissoko, my goodness, Ismail. We, are, we need a midfielder, but I don't think we are that desperate to get Sissoko in. I mean, if you get someone like a Sissoko, does it really boost your confidence? Does it really lift your mood up? I don't think so. If you sign Tillemans today, all of us will be happy. But if you sign Sissoko, uh, I'll just maybe post a video for one minute. Sissoko has joined us. No, thank you guys for watching. That's basically it. Like, how long will Sissoko be here as well? Another thing is that we are not going to sign 30-year-old players. Right now, we are getting players who are between 20 and 25. Sissoko is... I've been watching Sissoko for like 50 years in the Premier League, so he'll not be joining us. Victor says we need more midfielders and also one winger to replace Pepe. Um, how about a winger? Get midfielders first and then you can get a winger. Um, we go for quick line in form of um Kapu. Um, Kapu from Villarreal, you guys really love former Tottenham players, huh? And former Watford players. Um, Kapu is good, Kapu has been playing great for Villarreal, and um, I'd be happy that idea, I'd, I'd consider that idea for a couple of years. Um, I don't mind him, I, I would definitely prefer him to Musa Sissoko. I think three more signings, says Zolani. We need to sign more players because we need Premier League uh, for this season, says um Palo. Paolo wants to win the Premier League. Paolo is not joking around. Paolo is looking for players to win us the Premier League. Uh, Mahari from um, Uganda, thank you. Um, Jose from Ghana, um, Frank from Mozambique. We need to strengthen the midfield, says Joseph. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I think this is, um, I think I've seen Sierra Leone, Joseph. What is the real, uh, the real issue, the management? Please just don't joke and uh, not joke with um, this season because I believe and I know that Arsenal is winning the Premier League in Europe. I believe it. Wow, Abobo is thinking about the Premier League and also the Europa League. A double, a double title winning season. Let us not get uh, forget this saying that um, we, when you laid your bed is uh, yeah when uh, yeah I know the saying I know what you're trying to say. The issue um, you lie on the bed. Uh, I've forgotten the saying, but I know what you're saying. Uh, when you, you 
it totally disappeared, man. Um, the issue of Arsenal winning the league is that if we can win October matches, also we are good to go. If we can win October matches, we've October matches at Tottenham, Liverpool, and Man City. For those guys who don't know, those are the games you're going to play um, in October. So those are very, very tough. Uh, we can't rely on party. I agree with that. The injuries are too many. Um, Ismail is really, really, really considering Sissoko. He's not even joking. He said it three times. Um, I'm really worried about tomorrow match. Um, I'm not worried about tomorrow's match. We can still win that game even without those guys. Um, Aston Villa are doing very, very badly. Obviously, they can still pick it up for tomorrow, but they are doing very badly. They've um, won one game so far this one against Everton, but apart from that, they've been very shaky. So I'm pretty confident in that one. I'm pretty sure he can get goals. Um, Arsenal need two defensive midfielders. Uh, Cookie says would uh, Sabitza leave by Munich? I think we were linked to him a few months ago. I think we were linked to him like two years ago, a year ago, a few months ago. I mean, maybe that could be an option. Uh, we might we might um, leave, but again, Champions League right now, will any player right now consider leaving a Champions League team? I know Anthony has done it for Ajax, but there is another attraction because he's worked with that manager before. So I don't really think there's a player who's going to leave a Champions League team for a Europa League team unless there's something that really pushes them. Like Gabriel Jesus to Arsenal, former manager. Anthony Lissandro Martinez to Man United, former manager. Especially right now with two days remaining, everyone is already going on in the season already. It's very hard to convince some teams to sell players. Um, if I was going to sign a midfielder from Bayern Munich, the one midfielder I'd really want is... Um, Musiala, but if you get Musiala from Bayern Munich, you're going to pay 200 million. So that is the one midfielder dream of getting from Bayern Munich. Even even Kimmich, even Kimmich would be an up. Imagine if Arsenal signed Kimmich from Bayern Munich. Oh my goodness, that is the kind of guy that will sort out every one of our problems. He can play in the party role. He can play in the Jaka role. He can play at right back as well. Like if you get someone like a Kimmich, if Arsenal signs someone like a Kimmich, um, whichever day we can sign him. Like that would definitely show me that our levels have gone up if we can get someone like Akimich from Bayern Munich. Arsenal's, uh, Arsenal, we need to spend on quality midfielders to keep us uh, sustainable, uh, says Patrick. My net spends that amount of money on one player. We haven't spent any money, says Kenny. Yeah, I mean, it's true, but uh, again, there's, uh, there's a lot of things you need to consider as well. Um, Man United have been spending that money on a lot of players and how many have worked for them. They spent $8 million on Maguire, Disaster. They spent 50 million on one Bissaka. Disaster. They bought Schweinsteiger. Disaster. They bought Schneiderlin. Disaster. They they bought Falcao. Disaster. They bought Di Maria for 60 million. Disaster. Like, how many times have they bought so many? We can go on. They bought Lukaku. They bought Alexis Sanchez. None of those players worked. Even if you come back to Arsenal, we signed Pepe for 72 million. Disaster. So. Whenever you sign those expensive players, I guess that is why they don't want to sign those expensive players. Chelsea, Lukaku, 100 million, disaster. So um, we can't really just spend 100 million, 90 million, 80 million on various players. For me, I'd rather, as long as a player fits the, the, the tactic and the strategy that we are trying to use, I'd be happy with that. That is all I need. I don't, I, that player doesn't have to be 200 million. Even if the player is 15 million and he fits the Arsenal bill, I'm happy to take him. I rather the 50 million you can sign three players if you're if you're you're bright enough instead of getting one player who might turn up to be a disaster. Uh, for Man United, uh, yes, right now they're signing players who've worked with the manager before, but over the years, my true opinion is that they've signed players just because. Um, Fred has played well one season. Let's get Fred from Shakta. Even us, uh, I'm currently working on a Pepe story. I said that last week, but it's a long story about Pepe. Pepe himself. Pepe only had like one good season at Lille and we splashed 72 million for him. I don't I don't think seeing uh, watching a player for one season is enough because we signed Pepe because of one season at Lille and that did not work out. Uh we need a midfielder for now, says Nam Kaba. Uh you should sign Tillemans at 5 million and net of 50 million, says uh, Abobo. Uh we need a defensive midfielder. Our attack is okay, says AD. I'd have loved what Prowse is another one. I definitely love what Prowse. My goodness, but it's probably not a move he'd want. I actually think it's a move he would want, but I don't think it's a move Southampton would be willing to do with us right now. 
Um, I don't think um, Ward Prowse would refuse. I know Southampton is his club by like his his blood club, but I don't think he'd refuse to join like a top six club if he's given the chance. I don't think he'll stay at Southampton forever. Uh, we need Tillemans, says Michael. Um, and I can see we need Nets, we need Tillemans. Uh, Ndidi, Ebenezer says Ndidi would be a good option. I mean, we've wanted Ndidi for such a long time. I, other teams have wanted him for such a long time as well. I think he's a good player. But even him, recently he's been getting injured so many times. I'm pretty sure I've seen him injured like twice or three times the last one year. But I would I would consider him. I don't mind that option at all. Um, Tillemans in Neto. Tillemans in Neto. Uh, what happened to Lucas Paqueta? I guess we just didn't want him. I mean, you know, there's there's a couple of situations where the fans want a player more than Atita and they do want. Uh, like Bisuma. We wanted Bisuma, but I don't think at the end they do wanted Bisuma. So they they were interested in Paqueta, but I think after signing Fabio Vieira, I don't think we were ever going to go for Paqueta. We were still hopeful we'd go for him. The news told us that we'd go for him, but personally, I don't think at the end they do were keen on him because I don't think could have I don't think would have left let, let him go um to West Ham. So whenever a player goes to such a team or not such a team, not not being disrespectful to West Ham, whenever a player doesn't join Arsenal and decides to go to another team. Um, I usually ask myself, did they really want to join Arsenal? For Rafinha, for example, Rafinha did not want to join Arsenal or Chelsea. He wanted to go to Barcelona. Or if a player like um, Paqueta joins another team and we are not even serious about him, then I'm guessing at Senedu they didn't really want him 100% or they changed their mind on him. I think more of Arsenal fans need, uh, I need Tillemans. I agree with you, Thomas. Um, Oh my goodness. Ekene says we need oh my goodness. Ekene says we need Deli Ali. Deli Ali is already gone. Deli Ali is gone to Besiktas and uh, Tottenham player joining Arsenal. I don't think that will happen anyway. And Deli Ali, the Deli Ali that you knew from 2017 is not the Deli Ali from now. Deli Ali is not the same player. Like he's dropped from level 9 boom to level one like he's not the same player again and Deli Ali is um is a box-to-box midfielder kind of number 10 where he used to play for Tottenham and we already have Odegaard and all those guys playing there I, I mean Deli Ali Deli Ali again if you watch Deli Ali Deli Ali right now he's not the player that will add something to your team I'm actually so serious um Mourinho said three years ago that Deli Ali is very lazy and that is still a fact until today. So that is not the kind of energy you need in your team. Uh, wow. Today I've seen Deli Ali, Sissoko. Interesting. Tillemans will be a better option. You need that guy. Uh, Marcel is joking with signings, <laughs> says Ebenezer. Uh, what about Pino? It's a bit quiet on that in Emmanuel. Man, you had to just announce Anthony for 100 million. We can spend what you want if they are uh, within FFP. Uh, we really need uh, midfielder, says Ibrahim. Um, thank you, Adams. I appreciate it. Um, let's see. So many comments, guys. I appreciate it. Hopefully, uh, we do get a couple of players in. Um, please, I want to know if there's any way. Nope. Um, we need to sign midfielders and wingers. Says Paolo. Uh, Savage from Lazio that will cost you 80 million. That is a guy I definitely love, though. If Tillemans' deal is complicated, why can't we go for Tonali? Says Anthony. We need Tillemans for now. A lot of you agree that you need Tillemans and all that. So that is the latest news on today. I really enjoyed the chat. Um, El Nini is out injured as confirmed by David Austin. He could be out for a lot of months. And he has joined um, Thomas Part in the injury list will not have both players so we're going to be interesting to see who we are going to play with um in tomorrow's game does that mean we are going to push jack into midfield does that mean mean you're going to splash the catch on um yuri tillemans we have to wait and see thank you for watching and i'll catch up with you on the next one